Hello everyone, Trophy Winehander, welcome back to my wine channel. Today I'm doing a review of the 2017 Chateau Lagrange from the Pomerol region. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I have some interest recently in the Pomerol region. I did a video, I don't know whether I've shot it, so I don't know whether it's going to appear before or after this video on the Pomerol region and also one of the famous wineries there called La Pin. And sometimes I like to do this just so that I can get to know the region a little bit better. And I figure that if I can drink some wines um, and compare them uh, back to back, it's a little bit easier to remember as compared to if you drink one wine um, and then wait six months to compare it to another wine in that region. So that's kind of how I um, generally do things. I'll get interest in different areas and um, kind of really get into them and try to understand them a little bit better. So that's one of the regions I did this wine. Chateau Lagrange is probably a little bit young, the 2017, but I thought, um, let's drink it. It's one of these wineries that I really um, want to like, and everyone has their own personal preferences, and we have to admit those biases. So this is a winery that I love to like, uh, because first of all, it's not that expensive, it's on the Pomerol Plateau, and if you looked at my video from the Pomerol region, you'll understand that the Pomerol Plateau has a um, very high amount of blue clay, which is, uh, contains oc um, iron oxide, which is very good for the growth of Merlot. That's where a lot of the uh, top end uh, Pomerol wineries are located, like Chateau Petrius, like La Pin. So I'm thinking I'm smarter than everyone else. I'm thinking, well, this is on the plateau and it's not that expensive. So maybe I can get a deal here. So I'd really like to like this wine. So that's why I bought it. And um, I've tried it a couple of times and it was a little young. So I thought I'd try it again and see how it worked out. Let's talk a little bit about this winery. Again, it's got such a good history and it's one of these stories that I'd love to like. It all fits. But again, proof is in the pudding and you have to drink the wine actually and see if it's to your palate. So the property is in the northern part of the uh, Pomerol Plateau. Again, the plateau is very important because it contains blue, what they call blue clay. And the, blue, it's made, the clay looks or the soil looks blue because of the uh, amount of um, iron oxide that's contained in the soil. It was purchased by Jean-Pierre Marx in 1953 and passed on to his son, um, Christian Marx, who is so famous in the region. And he still runs it. It's a very small winery. It's only about nine hectares. Um, I think in 2012, it took over another um, vineyard called Certain Marzel. And so it added to it. So about nine hectares, not a lot. They produce about 2,000 cases a year. Again, not a lot. So I like this idea. Everything checks a lot of ch um, check marks in my mind uh, about a good winery. And uh, again, very attractive price. Um, their vineyards are located near Chateau Legay and Chateau Vrecois Legay. And so, um, again, in, on, on the Pomerol Plateau. Uh, the vineyard um, has a lot of um, clay soils. That's great for Merlot. And um, they generally age their wines 16 to 18 months in oak, only about 40% are new oak. The vineyard is planted 95% Merlot, 5% Cabernet Franc. But in this vintage, and I believe most vintages, um, 100% 100 of the grapes are Merlot. The vin Chateau Lagrange doesn't have its own vinification facilities or winemaking facilities, so it uses the facilities of Chateau Trottenoy. So I think that's a pretty advantageous um, thing because Trottenoy um, has really good facilities. 2017 vintage would be considered an off vintage, or drinker's vintage, it depends on how you want to look at it. Um, so it should drink earlier. And this vintage was given 92 points by Wine Spectator and 2,550 cases were produced. 
Doing this review has really taught me a lot about expectation. So the style of this wine is meant for early consumption. And when I first bought this wine, not doing as much research on this wine, I thought I had a steal. I'm thinking to myself, well, it's on the Pomerol Plateau. It's less than $100. It's got blue clay, so it's going to be as good as Le Consignon and Petrus. So I'm smarter than everyone else in the world. And I've got this deal. I'm the new you know, Robert Parker who finds these uh, wines that uh, no one else knows. But as I do, did more research on this wine, I realized actually it's about um, stylistically, this wine is for early conception. It's, uh, it's made by the Moex family who make other wines like Trottenoy. Um, but there's, it's not that the wines, and again, we go back to uh, earlier videos where I say it's not about the wine and what the producer can do. A lot of these are great skilled winemakers. It's what market that that wine goes to. And if every wine uh, tries to be a hundred point wine or try to speak to the same market, well, it's kind of boring then. So every, and even within producers, they have different wines and uh, for different markets and for different drinking abilities. So this wine really is meant for early consumption. Um, it's an easier drinking wine, you can tell, because they don't use as much oak. And so, it's not going to be as tannic. And so if you're expecting a wine like Chateau Petrus or Le Pen uh, or uh, Le Pen or Le Consignon, then you're going to be disappointed, which is what I learned. You have to put those thoughts at the door and not judge the wine with your preconceived notions, but let the wine speak to you and love the wine for what it is. Let's look at the cork, kind of a medium sized cork, simple, uh, nice, but again, uh, for 17, pretty clean. That's the way it should be. Label is um, nice, simple. Jean-Pierre Max family in Pomerol. Fairly simple label. And then, this is the wine itself. Um, I would say not heavy in color, almost um, shows a little bit of aging, but it's not dark uh, purple or dark red. So kind of it fits in with this um, expectation that it is an earlier drinking Bordeaux. So let's taste the wine. I'll let you know that I did have this last night at a nice restaurant, French Bistro restaurant in town called Alouette. At the end of this video, I'll have a video of their uh, beef tartare table side, which is really exceptional. So I had it with beef tartare and then with coca van. Uh, delicious, uh, lovely pairing. I think when I opened it again, the expectation was I had just uh, finished reviewing the 2006 uh, Le Pen, and I was expecting these really big wines because it's 2017. So my I had to recalibrate when it came out, and it wasn't as heavy as I thought. We put it in a decanter, but it drank fairly well, um, fairly soft, some earthiness, some smokiness, some red fruit on the palate, and um, not really heavy tannins. So let's taste it now after a, um, a night. So this is the second day, knowing that 17 is what they call a drinker's vintage, or some people call an off vintage, depending on what you say. So it's gonna be for earlier drinking. So on the nose, you get, I don't think you get many, uh, much floral. You get mostly um, red fruit, like um, raspberries. I get, I don't get as much, I don't get the smoke that I got uh, last night, but I get, um, yeah, some small red berries. And then I get a little bit of uh, candy shop or confectionery type aromas, but mostly fruits, a little bit of oak, uh, very pleasant. Um, and oh, sorry, some earthiness, obviously, in this wine from Palm Roll, but um, nice.
on the taste you get some oak fighting with some primary fruit flavors again strawberry cranberries raspberries i get a lot of that type of uh, taste on the aftertaste a little bit of um earthiness a little bit of leather leathery components to it um and then some good acidity at the end i would say the tannins on this are medium there is a quite a bit of a um, charred or toasted oak aftertaste on this um quite significant actually it's surprising because they only have 40 percent new oak uh, but they do age it for 16 to 18 months so um there's it's quite evident um in the aftertaste the oak um actually i think it's french oak so it's quite evident um it doesn't taste um to me it tastes very fairly sweet this it's very sweet oak um so yeah, so I, I do taste that. Mm. This wine, I think, will benefit from dishes like we had last night, like cockavan, like beef. There is an acidic component to this. So it's not um, just as a sipping wine, it's a little bit heavy for a sipping wine. But with a little bit of food, I think it will balance out the acidity. Not heavy a tannin. I think a lot of um, people that are um, not don't don't want to wait for uh, Bordeaux wines uh, to, to kind of soften would like this wine. It is, I think it's drinkable right now. I'm not sure if it's going to get any better. Um, my rating of this wine is going to be. Um, 89 points the only reason is that i think it's a good wine it's very drinkable um i don't think it has the complexity that i would think that i would like for this wine and it's a little bit oaky for my taste um it doesn't have it doesn't seem to have the fruit to support the oak in my opinion but it could be that it's young um but it's a very very drinkable wine so if as compared to uh, wines like Lievo Lacasse or Montrose, Montrose that people don't want to, you know, a 2017 Lievo Lacasse would not be drinkable at this point. And for those people who want to drink Bordeaux, um, who can't find back vintages, this is not a bad uh, wine to drink um, because it's not that expensive. It was a under $100 here in Canada. It comes from the Palmoral region. It comes from, uh, it's Merlot-based. It's got some earthiness, it's got fruit, and um, very drinkable, um, mouth-watering, and very acceptable for people that like North American wines and who don't like a austere or um, not as fruit-forward style of wine. Um, it was known as a more uh, rustic, backward style of wine, but I think with the Moex family being involved, it's quite modern in terms of style, I think. Um, it's not pretentious at all. It's very drinkable. So uh, what I'm trying to say is I think I enjoy this wine, but I'm a little disappointed because I thought I was buying, uh, I was being smarter than everyone else. So it, it's a great drinking wine. And again, I think this review proves to me that I should, or kind of is a lesson to me not to overthink wines and not to put my expectations on a wine um, but just let it be what it is and so I guess initially I was disappointed but as I continue to drink it now I'm loving the wine for what it is which is a earlier drinking wine which is really nice to drink and um, not a uh, Pomerol or a Le Consaillon or a Levengeo um, wannabe it's by itself it's a great drinking wine and that's what i should accept it to be um, so i hope you've enjoyed this tasting until next time happy drinking